Hey there guys, my name is Earth to Lydia. Welcome or welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you the best ways to loop on Leary's Memorial Institute. Before we start, if you're new to the channel then hey, I'm primarily a Dead by Daylight streamer over on Twitch so if you're interested in interacting directly with me or talking about more of my videos then you can catch me at twitch.tv forward slash earth to Lydia. Alternatively, if you enjoyed the video, if you'd consider subscribing and leaving some feature ideas that you want to see in the comments then I'd be more than happy to do that for you. Okay, so to start off, I actually think that Leary's is one of the easiest maps to run as a survivor. Once you know what you're doing you can usually get a lot of fast vaults on back-to-back -back windows and the killer is gonna have to try that little bit extra to shut down the chase. It does depend quite a bit on the killer that you're going against but as far as indoor maps go this one probably favours the survivors the most. As most of you will know Leary's is a rectangular map meaning that there are no alcoves that jungle gems will spawn in and every tile leads directly into another one that you can loop. So let's start on the outside of the map first and work our way inwards. Leading around the outside side of the map is one continuous hallway which is littered with unsafe pallet loops. If you're not confident with looping you should probably try and stay away from the outside of the map. Usually you have more generators on the outside that are easier to keep track of as well. I'd personally suggest leaving the outer gens until later in the game. As I mentioned in my how to stop three genning video, the generators on the furthest points of the map are better in end game because they create more distance for the killers to patrol. The same applies here so all of your hallway gens are better left until later in the game. Just make sure that when you do work on these generators you look around you and you plan your escape route whether that's running to an unsafe pallet loop or to a tile which can get you further into the center of the map just anything that buys you a bit more extra time getting a little bit closer into the map you'll see some common tiles making appearances the first is a perfectly square tile with four bathtubs in the center this room will also have at least two entry and exit points as well as one window this can be a little fiddly if you've got the killer directly behind you because you have to run this room in a way that allows you to get the fast vault on the window to do this you want to loop around the bathtubs in a way that will give you a long run up to the window and not at an angle, therefore giving you the fast vault. There's a similar variant on this room as well which, rather than the baths, features an unsafe pallet loop. You can treat this slightly differently in that you can use the pallet as you normally would and once this is used you can try to lock the killer into the pallet break animation and use the window to escape. Alternatively, you can still loop around the pallet while it's up and escape through the window if you can get the fast vault and keep the pallet up for looping later in the game if you want to loop back around. Similar in theme, the next set of tiles that we have are the shower cubicles. These limbs are typically a lot longer in length and have several different variants. The first variant features a long loop down the center of the room with a pallet at one end. Typically this loop is long enough that once the pallet is thrown the killer cannot mind game this and will be forced to break the pallet if you don't leave the loop yourself. On the other hand, it is a long enough loop that you may have to throw the pallet early as it's easy for the killer to catch up to you by the time that you make it back around to the pallet again. This does obviously depend on the killer and your best judgment but generally speaking this can be a very strong loop in favor of the survivor. The other variant that we have it sees two separate loops between the cubicles at either side of the tile. The first is usually a pallet between two sets of square cubicles. You can run this the same way that you would run any other unsafe pallet loop but perhaps with a bit more confidence as the walls are very high and cannot be seen over by the killer. This makes it easier to run against killers like Huntress and Plague as they can't fire their projectiles over the top of the cubicle and hit you but it does make killers with no red stain or a terror radius like Ghostface or a crouched pig very hard to predict. On the other end of the tile you'll most likely have a similar setup to the bathroom room. This will probably be a square set of cubicles with a window close by. Just do the exact same thing here, loop around the cubicles to get the fast vault on the window. Lurie's also has a few odd L-shaped rooms scattered around which are a little bit more tricky. Something that I typically see a lot of survivors doing at these rooms is just running around the outside wall without even trying to utilize it as a loop. Typically when you do this the killer can easily cut through the room and cut you off and guarantee themselves a hit on you. Rather than trying to run around the outside, try using this room the same way that you would an L wall from the LT wall setups that you get. There are usually several entry points on either end and on the outermost wall is a window. You want to run this from the inside towards the outside of the map to guarantee yourself the fast vault. Then if possible loop back around to the short end of the wall to make the most out of these rooms. Having said that the best thing about Leary's is there are a lot of loops that feed into one another with two windows back to back. Make sure to use this to your advantage as the killer will want to avoid vaulting as much as possible and will instead try to round the walls to catch up to you. A good example of this is typically in the center of the map and is something I like to call the control room. This is the main room with the television suspended from the ceiling. In the control room you will have one unsafe pallet loop opposite the generator and three rooms coming off this that each have window vault points. My favorite way to run this is usually 
usually utilizing the tile that's behind the generator, getting a fast fall on the window into the control room, running through the pallet, throwing it if I absolutely have to, then rounding the corner and getting a fast fall on the next tile, which usually puts a lot of distance between me and the killer. Alternatively, if you run it the opposite way and start by vaulting the window by the stairs, you can run upstairs and you have several options here. If you're running balance landing, there's a hole in the floor at the top of the stairs at which you can use to drop down and sprint away and this will get you some serious distance on the killer. Or if the gen in the main room has been completed, you have some window vaults ready for you to drop back down into the main room. Though I'd only suggest using these if the killer is very close behind you, otherwise they can usually avoid going up the stairs and catch you a lot faster. One thing that you do have to be careful with in the main room is that if the basement spawns here, then one of these window vaults will drop you right down into the basement if you're not careful. If I could give you any advice before trying to loot this area, it's just to get your bearings on where the basement is first. If it's not in here, then it'll probably be in the next spot on our list, and that is the office room. The office is a much smaller room on the map, identifiable by its wooden exterior and the desk in the center of the room. You'll find a window vault in the middle of the main wall, which you can usually get a good run up to if you're coming from the outside of the map. Once you've vaulted this, you can watch for the killer and see what side of the loop they start rounding. At one end of the loop, you'll find a pallet. I'd avoid dropping this unless absolutely necessary, as this is a super strong pallet to have in the game. There's no real way for the killer to mind game this unless they decide that they want to vault the window multiple times, but that's very easily countered, so most killers will break it as soon as it's dropped. If RNG works in your favour, Leary's is a really solid map to just keep looping consistently. I've personally had quite a few games where you can keep on running and running and the killer just can't really do an awful lot to counter it. It's gotten a little bit better since its rework, but it's still a lot of fun. Anyway, that's about all I've got time for in one video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like, and if you want any advice on how to run any other maps, then please make sure to leave your suggestions in the comments of which one that you'd like to see next. I've also got a few more in my beginner guides to DBD playlist, so make sure to check that out as well. My social medias are all linked in the description box below, so if you don't see me on here, then you can definitely find me over there, including the link to my Discord server. And we're all a fairly nice community, so come over and meet some new people. And until next time, thank you all so much for watching and making it this far into the video again. See you later, guys. Bye.